Hi everyone, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Over the years, I've always received questions about pricing and what to charge, what I'm charging. So it's been some time since I've done a video on what I charge and I'm pretty open and transparent when people message me. Um, I do tell them what I'm doing because I think it's important to be transparent about what we're all charging. So I uh, did a contract video many years ago now that had specifics with my contract and some pricing structures, but it's very old and it's not what I charge today. So I wanna go over what I'm charging today, how I uh, decide what I'm gonna charge a client, as well as some questions I ask myself when I get requests from clients. So I'm gonna go over some real requests with you guys as well that I've received and how I've responded to those requests. So stick around and we're gonna talk all things pricing for face painting. So when someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to hire you to face paint, um, what's your rate? What do you charge? I usually do not respond with a number right away because that's not how we quote jobs, right? That's not usually applicable to the whole story of what they're, they're asking me. So usually when someone asks me my rate, I say something like, for birthday parties, uh, my rate starts at 250. Tell me about your event. Tell me about your birthday party, right? I need details. I don't just blindly quote people because then if you quote somebody 250 bucks and then you find out it's out of town and then you find out it's a joint birthday party with twins and they're both inviting both of their classes, then you've already started off on the wrong foot. You've done yourself a disservice and you unwillingly deceived someone with how much you would charge for that kind of event. So I would hesitate to ever just throw out your rate to someone, right? You want to immediately start asking questions. I would also, and I do, um, put a kind of auto reply. So on my Facebook business page, um, don't think I have it on Instagram anymore. I did, but I get too many other questions on Instagram, so I took it off. Um, but I have it in my notes app and I can copy and paste it and I'll put it up here so that you guys can see it, right? I need to know the date and the time. I want to know if I'm even available and if it's worth quoting it for you. I might be booked. I want to know where the event is. Is it in my town or are you asking me to travel an hour and a half, two hours, right? It happens. Sometimes I get inquiries from out of state, you know, that's a, that's a different rate for me to get on a plane. Um, and then I want to know what the theme is. What kind of event is it? Is it a birthday party? Um, is this a masquerade party? Is it a glow party, right? I need details. And then I do ask how many people are attending that will be painted, which is also very different. If you just blanketly say how many people are attending the barbecue, and you get the response 60 people. Well, they're counting adults and not all the adults want to be painted. So I try to distill it down to how many guests are going to be painted at this event. And sometimes they don't fully know and that's okay. But very often you'll get, um, okay, it's a princess birthday party and there's six girls. That's perfect. It's, it's 20 minutes away from me. It's on a Saturday at one o'clock. That's great. That's all the information I need to know to then comfortably say $250. That covers all of my costs, you know, covers my kit cost, my material cost, it covers my time, and six kids at a birthday party, you know, typically doesn't take that long. Now I'm going to add another tidbit here, which I've learned over the years and, and started to apply more so in the, in the last couple of years than I did early on. I also don't typically quantify for birthday parties specifically that it's $250 for two hours. Because if I say $250 for two hours and there's four kids that show up for that birthday party, I can paint those kids in like 25 minutes. But then I've already told the host that they've booked me for two hours. So then I'm sitting there Sometimes I can get them to paint their arms and then maybe if I'm lucky, I brought my glitter tattoos or something like that. Um, but then you kind of get fidgety and you're sitting there for two hours and you're like, 
what am I supposed to do, you know? And sometimes the host will come over and go, hey, listen, you know, half the kids didn't show up. You're done. Thank you so much for coming. You know, here's a tip and, and goodbye, right? And they let you off the hook. But if they don't, then you are sitting there for the two hours. So, um, so I don't always equate it to time. Often I will equate it and the way I say it in my verbiage back to them, whether I'm talking to them or whether I'm emailing or messaging them is, um, great, six kids uh, will be, you know, the $250. Um, please let me know if more kids decide to join or if anything changes, yada, yada. So then I show up at the birthday party. I can spend an immense amount of time on those six children. But when it's all said and done, I then usually tease the adults, you know, who wants to be a unicorn, blah, blah, blah. And if everyone's good and happy, I check in with the hostess or host and I say, hey, I think everyone's painted. Is there anything else, you know, you wanted me to do or anybody else you wanted me to paint? And they go, nope, you're good, go, right? So it does save time. I also used to equate more my rate to hours, um, specifically for things like birthday parties, where now I equate it more to my skill set and my ability to get into a party you know, set up fast, paint the kids with these amazing elaborate designs, make everybody really happy, and then clean up seamlessly and be out the door, right? So, so it's a mindset shift. So to circle back on that, birthday parties, my rate starts at $250. That is what I usually start with. And then depending on what the details are of that birthday party, it might go down and it might go up usually doesn't go down below $200. However, if someone in my neighborhood, like around the corner is, you know, which just actually happened to me this winter. Um, someone found me on, you know, found my email, asked me about the birthday party. Uh, it ended up being only like six boys. And then they gave me their address and I was like, that's on my street. So it was literally five driveways down the road. And I dropped my rate and I said, listen, you're in my neighborhood. Your kid goes to the same school as, as my daughter. It'll take me less than five minutes to get to your house, you know? So I said to him, 200 bucks and I'll be there. And it was a small amount of kids. It worked out. Uh, the opposite of that is finding out you have to drive an hour, right? Um, so that being said, let's address travel fees. I very often will charge a flat travel fee of, you know, 30 or $40 just to cover my gas. However, if someone asked me to do an event on a Sunday and it was two hours away, I am going to up that because I need to consider that two hour time difference and the event and driving back that's four hours of your time. So I usually wouldn't charge like my full rate, which tends to be around $130 to $150 if you were to break it down per hour. But maybe I would charge $50 an hour to drive because that's my time. So that's what I typically do. But I will say almost, almost none of those unique requests are ever the same cost. I really weigh the pros and the cons and the why of what I'm going to charge for those events. So when we're talking about corporate events and not private birthday parties, that is also a different price structure and a different thought process for me. So whenever I get a request from someone that is corporate, right? They're a business, they're an organization, they're having an event and they want me to come to that event. I do have a standard rate and minimum that I first reply to, but I also require them to answer a lot of questions. So I will reply to those requests and say, thank you so much for your inquiry, uh, for contacting me. I have a three hour minimum at $150 per hour. Please tell me more about your event, right? Have you done this event before? Maybe it's brand new. Uh, do you know how many people are attending this event? Do you uh, know how many kids are attending this event, right? 
Um, is there shade, right? There's all sorts of different questions you could ask to decide whether this is an event that you want to do or you need to charge more. So I'm also very careful with my language back via email or messenger, wherever they have contacted me, and I say, I typically charge 150 an hour with a three hour minimum. Please tell me more about your event so I can give you an official quote because you have no idea what they're gonna say back to you, right? Sometimes they say back to you, oh yes, we have this event every year, we thought it'd be great to add face painting to it, but we only need you for an hour and you're gonna paint 200 kids in that hour. Red flags, right? So then I do ask to have a conversation with people often because if you can get them on the phone and just explain to them you know, why that's not possible, it's great. Some people don't want to get on the phone, so you may have to reply with, um, that's not a feasible amount of time to paint 200 kids in order to have, you know, only an hour of face painting and get as many kids painted as possible, you're going to have to hire three to four face painters all at the rate of X, Y, and Z. Now at that point, if someone did say to me that they only want to hire me for an hour and they wanted me to speed paint and blah, 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 my hourly rate just went up three times because you're asking me to cut my time down but paint as many if not more kids. So you are asking me to speed paint, uh, use the top tier of my skill set and be as stressed out as I possibly could be. I'm not charging you $150 for that. So all of those things are really important to consider when uh, getting requests for, for corporate events. Um, but my standard beginning rate is now $150 an hour uh, with a three hour minimum. Oftentimes that covers and kind of shakes out what people are looking for or it's a complete non-starter because what they're asking for just isn't feasible and not possible. Now, I do want to uh, read a request that I just got that I think was an interesting one, and I'm going to tell you how I responded to it and explain the why. Okay, so this is a request I got from a local organization just last week here in my hometown, and it says, good morning. We are potentially interested in hiring someone to do Sesame Street themed face painting, uh, and it's like, in a, like a Saturday close, like in a week and a half. Um, for this specific event, it's downtown in my area. Um, it would be during, uh, during the event, um, can you please tell me how much you would charge? So a couple things immediately stand out to me on, on this request. First, they're asking for very specific designs, so Sesame Street designs. I've never done a Sesame Street party, so I would have to create a specific design board and or specific designs to do at this event, which requires me to do pre-work, right? It requires me to spend time coming up with these designs ahead of time. Um, they've also never done this before, never hired a face painter, right? probably looks like this event is something that happens often, but they just had this idea of having a face painter, which is lovely. So here's how I responded to this request. I said, thank you so much for reaching out to me. My standard rate is a three hour minimum with $150 per hour. And then I put the total usually so that it's very clear. So people don't think I'm quoting them $150, right? I just say, um, that and the reason I don't just do a flat total is because people want to know per hour, right? So if you just put a total they're gonna go well I just want you for an hour. How much is that right? So I make it very clear It's a minimum and it's this per hour. So if you want me for the fourth hour It's again that 150. So that's why I do it that way and then I said uh, to create a custom design board with Sesame Street designs will be an hour of design work so that's $150 on top of your requested time. Please let me know if you have questions. Happy to hop on the phone and discuss your event further and how I structure pricing, right? So it's polite but clear. 
and I'm, I'm leaving the door open so if they're at all interested, they can come back to me and ask questions. Sometimes I'll also put in there, if, it is, if it's an event I really want to do or I think there might be some wiggle room there, I will end that uh, response with, please let me know if this is in your budget or if you'd like to discuss options. This leaves the door open for them to say, oh, actually my budget was 400 could you do that, right? Could you do that instead? Now, and that's completely at your discretion. If face painting is your full-time gig and you really need to make sure you're getting as much income as possible, then maybe you want to leave the door open a little bit for people to come back with a little bit of a negotiation. Maybe you face paint for a half hour less and you meet their budget, right? Maybe you do less designs and you meet their budget. Whatever you're comfortable with. Maybe they decide, you know, they'll they'll feed you at the event or it's an event you really want to get into because there's a concert afterwards, right? There's so many variables that you have to consider as to what you're comfortable with. Um, but I thought that was an interesting one and I don't typically do charge for pre-designs for things that I'm going to do again. Like a Christmas board, that's something I've done, I have, and I do it every year. But a really, really specific design board like that, in the 10 years I face painted, or 10 years plus now because it's been longer than that, that's the first time anyone's ever asked me for a Sesame Street board. So am I going to invest my personal time into creating those designs and then hopefully someone's going to ask me in the next 10 years to do that again? Maybe, but it's not worth it to me. So I more or less said no, right? It's a polite way of still doing good business but also holding your standards and also teaching people what face painting costs. Because as we all know, it can be a really devalued industry. And I do believe it's up to us professional face painters to teach people that we're not volunteers. We don't, you know, we can't go buy groceries with the exposure you're offering us. This is a business and I've made a huge investment in my kit, in my training, in my skill. You know, I um, over the years I've learned every trick in the book on how to make a kid, you know, who doesn't want to get face painted, face painted. We're the magic creators and I do think that we need to value ourselves uh, so that we then teach our communities how to value us monetarily. Okay, so another thing, when I get a request from someone who is asking me to face paint at the county fair, it's an hour away, and um, it's on a Sunday, right? Sundays are very sacred to me. That's one of my days where I like to do very specific things, like film for you guys. That's one of my Sunday activities. I uh, spend time with my daughter. You know, Sunday is a lazy, I want to read my book day, and I want to cook a beautiful dinner. So for me, when I get that request, travel on a Sunday, county fair, tons of people, right? Tons of kids. Um, will you come face paint? I ask myself this question. If this event was tomorrow, would I regret it saying yes? And if I get that ping in my stomach that goes, uh-huh, you'd regret it then I say no. I And I usually don't elaborate too much. I just say, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not available for your event. Here's another great face painter in my area who you can, you can ask if they're available. Um, but I think it's really important not to accept things that you're gonna regret because, uh, and I think everyone has this uh, experience, whether it's in face painting or anything, but then you show up to the event and you're kind of already annoyed, you know? You've already decided you don't want to be there. And working with little kids can be hard and cumbersome. And if you're already annoyed and you're already in that headspace, and then some kid steps on your foot and sneezes in your face, you have a miserable time, right? And then you start painting badly and it's a domino effect. So I need to want to paint the gigs I am agreeing to. I need to be in a good mental 
headspace in order to be the best face painter I can be? So I think it's a really good question to ask yourself. And if the answer is, yeah, I would regret it tomorrow, then you're probably going to regret it a month from now or two months from now. So just say no. Uh, just don't do it. Okay, so I want to quickly address paid per face gigs. I have been painting for so many years now that I almost never do pay per face. There was like one music festival I do uh, a year now, and sometimes Pride Fest where it's pay per face. Otherwise, I'm having people pay me. I'm quoting them a full contracted rate and they're paying me ahead of time to be there to paint as many kids as I can or whatever was agreed upon. Um, I personally, if someone reaches out to me and is, you know, this is the request I typically get. Uh, hey, we're having a farmer's market. It's in some small town 30 minutes away. We'd love to have a face painter come and set up and charge the public. In my mind, because I've done this before and that's how I started face painting, uh, was at a farmer's market. Um, and I've sat there uh, and made 20 bucks. I've also sat there and made 200. So you don't know what you're going to get out of that situation. Um, if you again are a full-time face painter and you're trying to get as much as you can kind of wherever you can, then maybe that's a value to you. But I would argue uh, you're not gonna get a good return on your investment, right? Especially if they're asking you to pay to be there. You know, it's one thing if they give you a free booth and you're kind of break even or you make something and it's all profit. But if you spend $100 to be at that farmer's market and it's their first year and nobody comes, you're out 100 bucks. So it's not my favorite pricing structure or model for face painting, but I also am in a position where I've been doing this long enough that I have plenty of gigs and I'm grandfathered into so many gigs. So I'm at a more privileged stance in my business. When you're just starting out, some of that risk is going to be worth it, but just be careful and really mindful and consider what you're investing and what your return might be. Ask a lot of questions. Find out how many people come to this event. Have they ever done it before? Maybe negotiate with them. Hey, you've never done this event. I don't know if I'm gonna make any money. You know, I know you want to charge me a hundred bucks, but if nobody comes, you know, what what then, right? Make them tell you, you know? Maybe they go, yeah, you're right. Uh, let's do this. Let's just, you give me 5% of, of your, you know, what you paint. Um, maybe that's more reasonable to feel out an event. And then if you do end up painting a ton of kids and it's a great event, next year you can say, okay, I'm good with that $100 booth fee. So I would just be careful there. Um, when I do pay per face events these days, my rate has gone up dramatically. When I started doing pay per face, I would charge $3 for a really small flower, right? A, a cheek or a little eye design. And then five bucks for what would consider what would be considered like a crown or like a half face of some kind. And then $10 for a full face. That has changed. Now, uh, the last pay per face event I did, which was last summer, I was doing a basic design started at $15. Uh, and then it went up from there, 20 to 25 uh, and beyond. Now, that was hard for me because when I started face painting, I, you know, would charge $3. So the idea of people paying 15 bucks for uh, just a little face painted design was crazy to me. And I really had to talk myself into that being okay. One of the ways I talked myself into it is I walked around that festival that I was at and I looked at how much a soda cost. And then I looked at how much a hot dog cost and a cheeseburger and the tickets. And I realized that if people are gonna spend $10 on a hot dog, they're gonna spend 15 on face paint where they're gonna get a picture of their kids, it's gonna last all day, and it's gonna be a core memory. And when I tell you, I was so nervous at that event because it was the first time and the gal I was with who is a sweetheart I was saying to her I'm like oh my gosh I'm so nervous like what if this is too much what if nobody wants to you know pay this and when I tell you people were tipping me 10 15 20 dollars on top of what they were paying they were and I was shocked 
and it made me realize that it was the right thing to do and I will never go back down. I will always start at an appropriate rate per inflation and per what the market of that festival and event um, is also charging so that I can uh, continue to grow my value and keep my value. So I don't regret it at all, but I will say if you face painted for a long time, you've probably had the same feeling. It's hard to raise your rates, but it's very important that we do. So on the note of raising your rates, over the years, as your face painter, it can be very comfortable just to stick to whatever your hourly rate is. You know, if you said $100 in the beginning, you just kind of continue to rinse and repeat and charge $100. It's very important to raise your rates every year to stay in line with inflation. And sometimes it's just a $10 increase. It's a $5, $10, $15 increase. If you do it every year, you will continue to raise your income and you will stay within the market value. If you don't raise your rates for five years and you're still charging $100 and everyone else is charging $150 and you've been doing the same event, you know, the carnival hires you every year in August, it's going to be really hard year six to go, well, I know I was charging you $100 an hour, but now my rate is $160. That's a huge gap and it's not very palatable. What I have found is that all of these organizations that I work with, that I've worked with for years, when I say, hey, there's a small rate increase this year, you were paying 130 an hour and now my rate is 140, they don't blink. Because when you look at it as a whole, you know, not only is that hourly rate a five, 10 buck increase, but their entire event with me, you know, what they're paying me just went up $30. And they're a corporation. It's not their money, right? It's not the marketing person's money. It's not the HR person's money. So they often do look at that and they go, oh, 30 bucks, that's fine. Haven't had anyone complain or even question it. So I would really advise you to continue to raise your rates appropriately so that at some point you're not in this huge gap. So how do you know if you are charging market value? How do you know that your rates align with other people's rates in your community? There's a few ways. Um, if you have a good face painting community and everyone's friendly and you know you have people you work with, talk to your fellow face painters. I recognize that there's some regions and countries and areas where face painters are a little bit more competitive um, and you're going to run into that in, in to some degree, right? Some people are very possessive and they don't want to tell you what they're charging because they think you're going to then charge 10 bucks less and steal all their business. Um, and that's unfortunate, but there are a lot of really great people in our community that really know there's enough, enough business for all of us to go around and they will discuss that with you. That's what I did uh, about a year ago with some of my good friends in the face painting business. I said, what are you charging? I'm charging this. And often I'll be like, you should charge more, right? Because sometimes I feel like I'm on the higher end. Um, but I, I, it's just, it's what I'm comfortable with. And it's what I do think after all these years, I should be charging. So talk to your fellow face painters, um, see if you can have that conversation with someone and see if you're aligned with the community standards of what face painters cost. Another way that I always tell people when someone asks me what they should charge and they're in South Carolina, I don't know, I live in Iowa, I'm in the Midwest. Um, so I don't know what the rates typically are in that area of the country or California or New York, right? They probably are similar to my rate, but it's a different region. So I will tell people, go on a Facebook group, go on, you know, face painting help groups, on uh, the Fab TV group, right? And just say, hey guys, what are your rates? You can also go into the search bars of any of those face painting groups and put in topics and you're going to see threads and threads of where people have this conversation and you're going to see what the standard rate in Arizona is for face painting. Maybe people are charging anywhere from $100 to $150 and you want to be somewhere in between. So it's a really, really good way to figure out 
what people are charging in your area so you can stay aligned. Now I also know that in the beginning it's really hard to charge top tier for your face painting and I don't necessarily think you should. I think you can be at a lower tier within that range. So I would really caution you if the standard rate in your area is $120. That's what it seems like all the face painters are charging and then you charge $80 because you just don't think you're that good, right? Maybe you're not trying to undercut anyone or steal business. You're just not confident enough to think your face painting is good enough. So you're gonna just charge a very little because you don't want people to think they're not getting the right value out of what you're doing, um, which is a common thing I, I see. I would caution you not to go too low because one, you are devaluing the entire industry and practice by going too low. The other thing is you're gonna get better. So, you know, year two, when you're doing so much better and you're faster and your designs look even better, then you're trying to jump your rate from $80 to 120 because now you're up to the standard, right? Where if you were at least like charging 100, then you can just charge 110 and then you can get up to that 120, right? And slowly build up that, that chargeability of your business. So I would be really careful of going too low. Um, and I know this from experience. When I started face painting, I've told this story before in some scenarios and probably on my, my channel too. When I started face painting, I took donations. I would not charge because I was terrible and I was mortified and scared to death that I'd paint somebody and some mom would be like, well, that's crap, you know, like get out of here. Why, why are you charging us? So I didn't charge. I had a tip jar and I took donations, you know, and that was, it has to be 12 years ago now or something like that. Um, so it was a very long time ago, but at the time it's what I was comfortable with. So you can absolutely volunteer at school fairs, you know, volunteer at events and practice. Uh, but when you are starting to build a business and you are chargeable, just be thoughtful and cautious about not going too low because you're devaluing yourself and then in turn unintentionally devaluing the industry and it's not a good way to make friends in the face painting uh, community that you're in. So just be mindful of uh, what you're charging. So I'm also really careful about not agreeing to gigs where I know they should have multiple face painters and they're just trying to hire me or they're trying to hire me for a, for a shorter amount of time than is truly appropriate, right? So if I get the, you know, uh, yes, we have 100 kids at the school, but we only wanna hire you for an hour. Please come paint those kids. Oh, it's fine, you can do cheek art. You Just quick designs is what we're looking for, right? That's classic. Uh, not the full face, it's, it's just quick stuff. So you don't need to be there for three hours and charge us $450. We just want you to charge us, you know, $100 for one hour and you can just paint something quick. So you have to explain to people, right? Every face painter right now is laughing that has had the same conversation. Um, you have to explain to people that if you multiply it out, it's a math problem, right? You're taking that 100 kids, uh, you know, uh, dividing it by the 60 minutes, yada, yada, and then it equates to what, I don't know, 30 seconds of, uh, you know, per child. That's not feasible. And if you agree to something like that, you're gonna have a miserable, terrible time at an event. So I am very careful not to agree to that kind of thing. And I do spell it out for people and we'll do the math. You know, if you're saying you're gonna have 200 kids and it's on average five minutes per kid, right? Even if I'm speed painting and it's a three minute design, getting the kid in the chair and then they're gonna go, I think I want a, hmm, what do I want? I want a flower, right? That's, it's an interaction, it's time. So even if I conservatively said five minutes per child, you know, times 200 kids, that would require this much time. So you really have to drill down into the entire process for people and explain to them that it's not that easy, right? It doesn't equate the way you want it to equate. Uh, so I think it is helpful if you can explain that to people. And also, um, you know, you're a steward of your own 
self, right? If you don't mind doing those kind of stressful gigs and or speed painting to see how fast you can be, uh, then by all means do it. For me, it's not worth it. I will require them to hire additional face painters. I will quote them additional face painters and say in order to meet your hour long face painting window at the five mile run downtown where you're gonna have, you know, 5,000 kids, you need four face painters. We're all at the rate of 150 an hour or I might charge 200 if we're only gonna be there for an hour or maybe even three. Um, and uh, we will paint as many kids as we can because I can't tell you how many kids we're going to be able to paint. We're certainly not going to paint all of them. So just make sure you're protecting yourself, you know, your mental health, your well-being. Uh, I think it's really important. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have agency over what you're going to charge and what you're comfortable with. So uh, just make, make realistic choices and make sure you know what you're getting into so that you don't regret it. Another thing to consider about public events is can you put out a tip jar? Now I have a rule with tip jars where if it's a corporate like picnic and it's families and it's on the corporate grounds, that's not a public event, right? That's the the corporate uh, family picnic or the corporate, you know, thank you day or whatever it is. That is not public. I do not put out tip jars for that. If it is a public street fair, farmer's market, something where I am being hired and paid to be there, but the general public is invited and they are going to have cash, right? The, the corporate picnic, people shouldn't be bringing cash to that because it's all paid by their company and their organization, right? But if it's a, you know, a festival or a fair or something where people are paying for food, paying for entertainment, buying beer, and there's cash, I will put out a tip jar. There are some events that I do where I will get hundreds of dollars in tips. So on top of my rate, I'm getting cash, which is awesome. So you can consider that as well. And I will mention too, my tip jar and what events I put my tip jar out for is also called out in my contract. So people that are having, you know, company parties, no, I'm not gonna put out a tip jar and like beg for money. But if it's a street event that is quote unquote open to the public, then it's in my contract that I'm gonna put out a tip jar. And then I have an asterisk by that that says, if you'd prefer me not to put out a tip jar, please let me know. No one's ever asked me to not put out a tip jar. And half the time at some of those private events, people are shoving tips in my craft and go. And I always say to them when they do, oh no, you don't have to tip me, please. They're paying me to be here. It's not necessary. You know, please don't tip me. Um, because I do find it like a little inappropriate personally. I don't want them to tip me. I don't want the company who hired me to think that I am asking for tips or encouraging tips. Um, cause it's just not the right vibe for that kind of environment. However, I have a hundred percent very politely said, no, thank you. Please don't tip me to someone. And then I turn around and they've shoved $20 in my, in my craft and go. So at that point, it's like, take the tip. Um, but I'm not, not trying to market for tips in that environment because I just don't think it's appropriate. All right, so to wrap this up in a nice little bow, my typical birthday party charge is $250 an hour. I rarely leave my house for a birthday party that's not 250 bucks, flat rate. For corporate events, public events, anything of that nature, it is $150 an hour with a three hour minimum, possibly a travel charge as well. For pay per face events, my starting price for face paint is $15. That is the minimum. And then I'll do a tiered up from there. $15, maybe a $20 or $25 
uh, rate and then even a 30 for really elaborate, you know, face painting where I'm going above and beyond. But $15 is where I start. Now I didn't mention glitter, I wanna mention glitter quickly. Um, for glitter bars at festivals, I will start much lower, um, usually at 10, and then that is just face. So 10 would be, you know, uh, half moons, glitter crown, right, 10 bucks. Then I move to 15 or even 20 when I'm doing face and chest. And then I have a full body option where it's 25 where I'm doing arms and chest and face. So glitter, just a little bit different because it's so quick and so fast and so easy. Um, but those are my uh, pay per face rates. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful. Please comment down below. Let me know, did I not cover something? Do you have more questions? I really hope that I answered a lot of your questions and that this was helpful, but I'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.